$5,700 a month, 120 square meter, entire house right here in Nakameguro. Before we go inside, let's go see what the neighborhood is like. Ah, Nakameguro, one of my favorite neighborhoods in Tokyo. It's a cross between Soho in New York and Silver Lake in Los Angeles, and like those neighborhoods, is home to many people in the entertainment industry. Nearby, you'll find plenty of cafes, bookstores, clothing shops, and restaurants, including the Blue Star Burger, which is the closest thing in Tokyo to In-N-Out, Afuri, a ramen shop specializing in yuzu-flavored ramen, and Schmatz, not Schmutz, Schmatz, which is a major German beer restaurant. It's also home to not the first, not the second, but the third best gelato shop in the world. Now, let's go back to the house. All right, and now we're inside. And this door behind me is insane. So it's kind of like the old school courtyard doors that they would have in Europe, where you have a door for the people and a door for the horses, or in this case, a door for the cars. And let me show you how that works. So you lock the door right here, you come over here, press this button right here, and it opens right up for you. So you can have access to your garage, which is right behind you. You have plenty of space to put your car of pretty much any height, maybe not a G-Wagon, but something a little bit lower and it can park right here, no problemo. And once you're done parking your car, just come on over, press this button, and, well, the garage closes right up, along with your door. Kinda cool. All right, so this is a very industrial house, and you have these pipes right over here running through it. It's kinda like in the movie Brazil, if you remember that, with the ducts on the roof. And these are all for AC. These are all AC and heat pipes. And right below that, you'll see we have plenty of storage here and on the other side. Now, let's go in and see the rest of this place. Of course, there's some shoe storage right here and under all these stairs, but right next to that, we have this guy right here. This is the security system, it's called ALSOC. It's kind of like an ATT or something like that in America. And even though Japan is probably one of the safest countries in the world, you still have the option to put in a security system. Just be a little extra safe. So now let's take off our shoes and put on our slippers and get into the rest of the house. You step right into here and you'll see, this is very interesting. I thought this was storage at first, but it turns out this is an office and you can tell for a couple of reasons. One, you have this hole right here where you can put your cords through so you can have your little computer set up right there. And two, you have a uh, AC and heater, a big old mofo in here, by the way. This is big enough to uh, usually cool or heat something maybe 10 times the size of this little room, but this is some heavy duty stuff. And while you're working in here, you have a little view of your very small, but at the same time, very nice, uh, garden. Right next to the office, in my opinion, great, great place to have it, is the bathroom. You'll notice that we only have one sink in here, so it's not a dual vanity, it's a single vanity, but you still have plenty of space over here to put all your stuff, and you even have two medicine cabinets right there. Say hi to the cameraman. And right below that, we have a built-in washer and dryer. This is actually very hard to find in a rental like this place. Most places have no washer, no dryer, no refrigerator or anything, really. Now, let's come on over here. This is kind of a Western style bath versus a Japanese style bath, in that the toilet is more or less in the same room as the shower and the bath. And if you come into the shower and bath, you can see we have a very nice deep, let me see how deep this is, bath. As you can see, it's very deep. And while you're in here, you can also do the Japanese way of bathing, which is take a bucket, you fill it into there, and you dump it on yourself. I'm not even joking, that is the old school way of doing it before these guys made their way to Japan. So one thing before we leave this little bathroom I want to show you is this guy right here, you can see there's a pole hanging in your bath. I mean, what the hell is that for, right? If you look right above that, you'll see you actually have a little heater that directs its air directly towards that. And uh, you can put your clothes there and use this entire bathroom as a dryer. It's more and more common in Japan, but uh, they're still really cool to have. And if you don't like hanging them in here, let me show you where you can hang them. You're right outside, you have this little kind of courtyard thing right here, and you have these hooks. And if you put a long enough bar, you can actually hang all your clothes out here. We could just use the dryer right next to you, but this is still nice to have. And from here, you have access to a little place where you can just kind of put some chairs and chill, you know, if you don't want to be a little bit higher on the next floor one, or you could just stare at that little garden again. Love that little thing. 
This place is a two bedroom house and two bedrooms means that it's not really big enough to have a family in, but it's good for the bachelor and maybe like a guest or maybe a couple or something like that. A very modern and unique couple. And you can stay in this bedroom right here. It's not the widest, but it is very long. So you can have your little bed area over here, easily fit a queen size bed, and then even have like a separate office or something right on the other side. And what I kind of find confusing about this place, but kind of like at the same time, is the fact that you don't have one, but two entrances into the same hallway. Come on over. Through this hallway, we can go into what I would think is maybe the guest bed. It's a more carpeted room, it's a little quieter, and it's a little smaller at the same time. But the nice thing about this place is if you come on over here, you can see you have this entire place right here as a walk-in closet. And this is a huge walk-in closet for pretty much anywhere in the world, but especially in Japan. And the nicest part about this place, what I really like, is the fact that you have all this storage coming from not only over here, but all the way over here as well. This is basically the attic, the roof is kind of slanted, and this is all of that space that they give you, even with poles to put your extra clothing, because I'm sure that you have a lot of it, you're gonna live here. One other thing about this floor is, you know, you had a little too much to drink the night before, and uh, it's in the middle of the night, three in the morning, let's say. You need to relieve yourself. Instead of having to go all the way downstairs, you have a nice little toilet right here. Come downstairs and just look at this. We are in the middle of your huge, at least for Japanese standards, living room, dining room, and kitchen. And not only is it large, it's very functional as well, this kitchen. You can see this entire wall right here is storage. Every single one of these opens up and you have all this space for all of your things. And as you can see, this place is really meant for big parties. And of course, if you have a big party, you have to clean up after. So to help out with that, this place does come with a little dishwasher. Love these little racks in here. It's not the full size, but this is still pretty big for Japanese standards. And so you close that up. But of course, before you put everything into there, you need to wash up a little bit beforehand. And you can do that with this beautiful Goe sink right here. And you can even pour yourself a glass of water with the little water filter right there. Now, coming on to this side, a couple of things I wanted to show you. First off, you remember those pipes downstairs? You can see them right here. There's only three of them, because downstairs were four. One went into the little office, but here's where the other three go, upstairs. And what I love, and I just figured this out maybe 20 seconds ago, this guy right here, these doors, hide away, and you would think, why would you want to do that? Well, if you look at the back of this, you can see it has a plug in there. So you can use this for space for your, maybe your rice cooker or microwave or anything else that you would like. Right above there, this is one of my favorite parts about this house, is this little panel right here. It may not look like anything that unique, but if you press this button, you will see this is actually the control panel for the solar panels on the roof. Yes, this house has solar power, so you can actually make more solar energy than you will be using in here, and you can sell the rest back to the city. Right here, we have a four burner induction heat stove. And if you remember, an induction heat stove cannot use certain kinds of metals. So make sure that you don't get anything aluminum, aluminum for you Brits out there. So one thing you may notice about this place is there's no vents up here. So what happens if you just make something that's really stinky and you wanna get all the smoke out of here? Well, there is actually a vent and it's hidden right here. If you press this button, you can see it rises up from its grave and creates a suction force unbeknownst to man to make sure that your kitchen doesn't smell that bad. I love this. So not only the kitchen, but also the living room has some hidden features to it. And you can see them all right here. Starting from the far left, we have this guy, which is the water heater controller and also an intercom service that you can use to talk with people in the bathroom. And right next to this, we have the two floor heating zone controllers over here, so you can have very, very warm feet all throughout the winter. And right next to that, you have the controller for the AC, which is right up there, the big boy that has these fins on it that allow the air to be redirected to other parts of the room. So let's see the actual room. You come on over here, we have the space for a TV. It's not just right here, you can maybe have a larger TV, somewhere around 64 inches, I would say. And I would think that that's kind of low, 
for most people's standards, but at the same time, in Japan, it's pretty common to have TVs at this height. Now, you may see that we have all these cables coming out of here. We have some RCA cables and the HDMI cable. Now, where all this lead to? Well, the answer is right next to it. We have this right here, where you can use for all of your components, say your PS5 and your Switch and your Blu-ray player or whatever you might have, and even a little surround sound system, if you must have that as well. So one last thing I want to show you is right here, we have another set of cabinets. And I saw these little rails in here. I was very confused as to what they were. I tried to pull out the doors, didn't really do it. No, this is what you do. You push them in. And to be honest with you, I'm not really sure what this is for, but my cameraman suspects, and I kind of agree with him, that this might be the mini bar. Put all your drinks in here. You can even have a little setup in there for I don't know why there is a plug in there, but you can have your drinks in here and I love that. And you can show them to everybody or if you don't trust your guests, you don't want to show them all the good Johnny Walker that you have in here, you can hide it all away. So that was the house with its beautiful floor to ceiling windows and very high ceilings to mention. Now let's get down to brass tacks. This place costs 650,000 yen a month. That comes out to about $5,700 a month. And before you even are able to move in, you have to pay for the initial fees. That's including the two months of security rents, the one month of key money, and all these other miscellaneous fees, including <coughs> my commission. <coughs> now that means that the total initial costs for this house come out to just about 4.3 million yen, which is just about maybe 37 $7,000. If you're interested in learning more about this place, you can visit our website at blackshiprealty.com. It's in the description below. You can also follow us and subscribe to us on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook or whatever social media you may use. And until next time, thanks for watching.